In this problem, we're told you are standing on a large sheet of frictionless ice and holding a large rock. In order to get off the ice, you throw the rock so it has a velocity of 12 meters per second relative to the earth at an angle of 35 degrees above the horizontal. If your mass is 70 kilograms and the rock's mass is 3 kilograms, what is your speed after you throw the rock? So let's go ahead and draw what's going on before and after we throw the rock, right? So before, after. So before, it's just going to be uh, us standing, right? And we have this rock. All right, so here's our person standing. They're going to be standing on this piece of ice. And so we know the mass of the person is 70 kilograms, and the mass of the rock is 3 kilograms. And so what do we know about this image, right? So we're both going to be standing still. The rock isn't moving. It's in our hands, and then we're just standing still. So both of our velocities, I'm going to call the person's velocity V1, 0 meters per second, and then the, the velocity of the rock, uh, V2, so 0 meters per second too. Right, so I'm going to call this M1 and M2. So M2 is the rock, M1 is the person. Okay, so this is them before. Now let's do the person after. So here's our person. And so now they're going to throw the rock, right? So the rock's going to be in the air. And we know it's going to be traveling, right? Where it's going to be traveling 12 meters per second, right? But keep in mind, it's going to be at an angle, right? So uh, imagine this where it was. So like this, it's going to be thrown at an angle. And we know this angle is 35 degrees uh, yeah, so 35 degrees. And so uh, what else do we know? So let's just relabel uh, the masses, right? So this person's mass is 70 kilograms. This is going to be 3 kilograms. And so what this does is since when, when they throw it, it's going to basically cause them to travel backwards. It's going to be some velocity uh, of this person, right? And that's what they want us to find. What is the speed or our speed after throwing the rock, right? So uh, we just want to say we can call this V2 final right? Or sorry, V1 final. So V1 final, right? Because V1 is our speed in the beginning. V1 final is the speed after. So we call this uh, V2 final, right? So now that we've labeled it, how do we solve this? So we're going to use the law of conservation of momentum. And you know momentum, it should be mv. P equals mv. This is the formula for momentum. So if we want to use the law, right? It's going to be m1 v1 plus m2 v2 is equal to m2 or m1 v1 final plus m2 v2 final. So what this tells us is the momentum of us in the beginning plus the momentum of us, or the rock in the beginning, is equal to the momentum of us at the end and then the plus the momentum of the rock at the end, okay? Because we know the law of conservation of momentum tells us the momentum in the beginning has to equal the momentum at the end, right? So how do we solve for this? So what you should realize is v1 and v2 is zero, are zero, right? Because we're not moving in the beginning, right? They're both zero. So what this means is this whole side is going to be zero. Because zero times anything is zero. So this is just going to become zero. And then equals. And then what we can do is just plug in the variables to solve for v1 final. Because that's what they want us to find. Our speed at the end. Okay? So m1 is our mass, which doesn't change. m1 is 70 kilograms times v1 final, which is our speed at the end, which we don't know. That's what we're solving for. Plus m2, which is 3, multiplied by v2 final. And so v2 final... You might say it's 12 meters per second, but what we have to do is take the horizontal component of it because essentially it's going to cause us to travel this way, right? And so we don't want to take the full number because the y component doesn't matter. And the reason that is is because uh, momentum isn't going to be conserved because there's going to be some normal force that stops us from moving. So essentially we just have to take the horizontal component. So how do we find the horizontal component of this? So if this is our thing. Uh, let's just draw it. You should know, but uh, if you don't, I'll show you. So this is 35 degrees. We know it's going to be traveling 12 meters per second, right? And so what we were trying to do is find that x component, right? So we know the cosine of an angle, 35 degrees, is equal to the adjacent over hypotenuse, right? So Cotella. So the adjacent, we just labeled x, right? x is what we're trying to find over the hypotenuse, which is 12. So if we multiply both sides, essentially x is going to be equal to 12 times the cosine of 35, right? That's the x component. You should know how to do that by now. But uh, yeah, so this is going to be uh, v2 final. Right, so 12 times the cosine of 35. And so what we can do is just go ahead and solve for v1 final. So move this to the other side. Uh, it's going to become negative, right, because we're subtracting it. So minus 3. This is just going to become 36 times the cosine of 35. So minus 36 times the cosine of 35 is going to be equal to this right here. So 70 times v1 final divided by 70. Right. That's going to cancel, so we'll just plug this in your calculator. So do minus 36 times the cosine of 35, and then divide that number by 70. 
So when you go ahead and do that, you're going to get V1 final is equal to minus 0.42127 and so on. You can round however you want. I'm just going to round at this place. So minus, minus 0.421. And then this is meters per second, right? Because it's velocity. And we use meters per second for uh, the other velocity. But yeah, so this is going to be its speed, right? But we want to say the speed is 0.421 meters per second. And then the negative just specifies that it's going to be in the opposite direction, right, to the left. Because we said the right was positive, so the left means it's negative. But essentially, uh, it's just going to be 0.421 meters per second opposite uh, the direction of uh, the rock. Or, yeah, the rock. So opposite the direction of the rock. So you can write that out. So just 0.421 meters per second opposite the direction of the rock. Uh, that's going to be our speed. And so, yeah, so this right here is your answer. And hopefully you found this useful.